Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to derive the distance formula. Let me write it first. Distance formula. I in fact don't like calling it a formula, even though it is. But the reason why I don't like it is because when I call it a formula, it seems as if it's a big deal. In fact, this is not a big deal. This is quite easy actually. And you will see that hopefully in this video. And the reason I call it easy is because it isn't something on its own. It is just a consequence of a formula that, uh, that you are probably very familiar with. So let's draw ourselves a cornered plane. And this is most of the time referred to, like when you first hear this expression, you are probably dealing with two-dimensional space, X and Y. However, I will talk about uh, a more general case as well. Okay, so stay tuned for that. But let's first do the most, the usual one. So X and Y. Maybe we have some point here with coordinates X1 and Y1. And the other is going to have coordinates, let's say it's here, X2 and Y2. And the question that you're trying to answer is, what is the distance, which we can call D, between these two points? What is D? Now... How do you find this? The way to find it is, if you look at the dis difference be in the x, which we can call delta x, and if you look at the distance, the difference between the y values, which we can call delta y, this angle is going to be 90 degrees. Why is that? Because x and y, they are axes that are perpendicular to each other. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I hope that this part is clear to you. And if you have this, well, then you can just apply the Pythagorean theorem, which says that the uh, hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two the of the other two sides. So, which means that d squared is equal to delta x squared plus delta y squared. And I think the most more important question is why this formula holds. In fact, I have a video where I proved the Pythagorean theorem. You can access that video from the cards right now and also from the descriptions part. So, this is given by the Pythagorean theorem, which I have already proved, as I mentioned. And if we expand the differences, we can see that d squared is equal to... Now, delta x is going to be x2 minus x1 squared. You could have written x1 minus x2 since you square it. It doesn't matter which uh, coordinate you're subtracting first, right? It doesn't matter. You can write 1 here if you would like, but make sure to subtract x2 then. Plus y2 minus y1 squared again. Oops, let's write this a bit nicer. Cool. And to get rid of the square on the left side, I will take the square root. So I erase the square here. <laughs> I erase more than I intended, but okay. And I don't put a plus or minus, uh, minus in front of the square root because the distance is going to be a positive number. That's how we define it. So this is it. Like, if you were to search this up in, on the internet, this is the formula that you would see. This is only correct, as you might realize, for two dimensions. In one dimension, what would you do? You would simply, for, for example, if you are in one, let's call this then, uh, 2d now in one dimension you would just let's say you are on the line number line which we can call x x1 is here x2 is here you would just subtract subtract them from one one or the other and you would want to put a put an absolute value here because x2 might be less than x1 and this would be your formula you can see that this is the simplified version of the above formula because both of the core, like, even though we have one dimensional space, you can imagine it as though we have a two dimensional space. Maybe y coordinate is, my y axis is here, here, or somewhere. And both of the points have y coordinate zero. So this, or let, let's not say zero though. They have the same y coordinate. That's the key, right? Because, well, actually, no, they have it as zero because they're on the x axis. So the y coordinate is 0 for both of them. 
this term cancels, then you have only this part. Since we are taking the square root of a square, you need to put an absolute value. So this is the formula for one dimensional, one dimensions. And this isn't very surprising, I guess. Maybe a better question to ask is, what is the formula for three dimensions? Because we live in a three dimensional space. Uh, so let's draw the coordinate system and I will draw the right hand coordinate system. If you are not familiar with it, don't worry about it. I mean, not for now at least. Because in the future you will need to worry about it if you continue your math and physics education. Cool. So this is the right handed coordinate system. I tried to do it symmetrical, okay. Like just not symmetrical, excuse me. I tried to make it as if it is 3D, even though it is on a 2D surface so try to imagine it as 3d please and if i am interested in the diff in the distance between like these two points let's say this is going to be x1 y1 z1 this time and then this guy is x2 y2 z2 and i want to find the distance between them this is well let's not draw it dashed so this distance d Okay, to start off, let me draw this distance, which I will call... Oops, sorry, I erased it. Uh, to start off, I'm drawing this distance, which I will call delta z, because it is a difference in the z direction. Right? And it is going to be like z1 minus z2. I mean, you can put absolute values if you want. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you... Well... It's better to put it, I guess. Let's not even write it, though. It doesn't matter for our purposes. So we have delta z as the difference in the z, the z values. And then I'm going to draw some distance like this. Connecting to the other point. Now, we again formed a right triangle. And this distance, which I will call... I don't know what I will call it. Let's call it M. This distance, which I called M, is on the XY plane. It is on this plane. Okay? And since it is on that plane, we can express that distance in terms of X and Y values. Now think of it like this. As if you take the projection of this point... To the xy plane. So it is this point now. And. To find the distance m. Between this point. And this point. We simply use the fact. That we used. That we proved above. Which is going to be that. M value is. So this is. Like this. This is going to be. Delta y. The difference in the y values. And this is going to be delta x. And again, this is 90 degrees. So in fact, m squared is delta x squared plus delta y squared. And d squared is going to be delta z squared plus m squared. Which is this business. So we can write de uh, delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared. So the formula is, I'm just writing this quickly now. You get the idea, I hope. And if you don't, you can always write in the comment section. I will try to help to best of my ability. This is the formula. And you can realize that this is a more general formula, general, more general form of the formula for 2D. Because for objects that, for points that we are considering in a two-dimensional plane we can consider them to be on the same plane right they're on the same plane so their z coordinates are the same which means that this part goes away it is that that's what i was mentioning when i said we can imagine projecting this point here it is like the projection of the 3d to the 2d surface and you can see that this formula simplifies to the uh to the 2d case okay so this is the 
3D, and I hope this is also intuitive. Okay, now, why don't we consider the most general case for n dimensions? And I'm not going to provide a proof, more a visual picture for this. You will just need to take my word for it. And it will make sense to you since we did three cases. But obviously, this is not, very for, this is not a very mathematically formal way of presenting it. You can explore this on your own in the future. So in n dimensions, so for n dimensions, for n dimensions, the formula is as follows. You have the distance. You are going to do a summation. You have some starting index. It goes up to n dimensions, as we mentioned. And inside the summation, you're going to have some generalized position, some generalized coordinate subtracting from, uh, subtracted from another generalized coordinate. You take the square of them, and then you take the square root of the whole expression. Now, I want to mention one thing, though. So, for example, if n is 2, this formula gives q1 minus p1 squared plus q2 minus p2 squared, and then you take the square root. It might look like nonsense. What is q1 minus p1? What is q2 minus p2? In fact, here, you would define q1 to be, let's say, so in fact, here, you would define q1 to be x1 and q2 to be, uh, not q2, sorry. q1 would be x1 and p1 would be x2, okay? So it's like, you need to keep that in mind. But, uh, I mean, we could maybe write, try to write this in a better way to, to make it seem more, to make it seem, to make it resemble the case we know more. Let's think, let me think about it. And this is just for the fun of it. Like, this is really unnecessary. But I just want to mention this as well. So let me do it. Let me also convince myself as well. So this is a way of writing it for n dimensions. Another way of writing it would be, um, well, I mean, you can't do it better than this. Like, you can't do better than this. Yeah. Because the thing that bothered me is this. Like, in this formula uh, here, the terms that you are subtracting, they have the same letter, only the subscripts are different. But in the summation notation, I couldn't figure out a way of, you know, having the letters the same and the subscripts the different. In our case, the subscripts are the same, the letters are different. So yeah, I couldn't do it. It is an aesthetic choice. It doesn't matter mathematically, as I said. You can define Q1 to be X1 and P1 to be X2. And you can define Q2 to be Y1 and P1, uh, P2 to be Y2. It doesn't matter. But I just uh, don't like it aesthetically. But anyways, if you wondered how to do it, this is the formula. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care. Oh, and by the way, maybe we could, we could do this. Hold on, I finished the video, but we could do this. So, uh, so let's see. Okay, hold on. So <laughs> let's do it like this. But this is going to be way, way too bad. <laughs> so if I were to do it like I, I'm going to have I1, okay. And then to N, I'm going to have I, okay. I is going to be here. And then uh, to the bottom, I will write two. Okay, let's do it like this. <laughs> what do you say about this one, huh? <laughs> this looks very silly maybe, but... Here again, we need to do a definition. When I so one, <laughs> one. <laughs> well, how do I even read this? X two, I would say one two minus one one. This corresponds to x two minus x one, and two two minus two one corresponds to y two minus y one. So basically, I mapped one to be x, and so I mapped actually I have mapped x to one, y to two. 
Z to 2 only half of the time. These guys are not a part of the mapping. But this is just aesthetics. Don't worry about it. See you in another video. Take care.